Hi there, and welcome to this uh, introduction to panoramics. Um, this video is just to give a little tour of panoramics and the uh, different features. Um, it is not a tutorial, it is really just to get a sense for the product and how it flows and what it can do. So um, let's look at the top bar a little bit to start with. So we have um, a menu at the top uh, where you can access some security settings if you're an administrator. Um, you can view the different uh, data sources as databases or Druid clusters. Um, there is a list of slices and these slices are um, essentially just a cut of data, so a single visualization or view on a data set, and a list of dashboards. Um, in this case, uh, for this introduction, so uh, there's two dashboards and a handful of slices that ship with Panoramic. So when you do install Panoramic, you're able to um, load these examples and you get these dashboards that you can uh, play with um, right out of the box. So here we're looking at, at um, a, a dashboard that shows some information uh, per country um, statistics and it comes from the World Health, uh, the World's Health Bank. So this data comes with panoramics and this dashboard is also there. So you see I can browse the dashboard. The dashboard is as interactive as the different components that are exposed in the dashboard. So you have tool tips kind of everywhere and everything is um, mostly SVG, uh, JavaScript, and a lot of D3 back here. Um, so that gives you an overview of the dashboard view. So we have uh, these dynamic filters that you can um, select and then the dashboard will reload uh, with these filters applied. Right, um, here. So um, that, that was the first dashboard. Let's take a quick look at uh, the birth name dashboard. So this is based of data of a, a baby birth name in the US over the past uh, 60 years or so. And this view shows um, also a collection of slices exposed here. Uh, you'll notice that these widgets are all scalable. So you can, you can kind of move them around and you can reorganize them uh, and save their positioning. You can also see here at the top that um, you can view the list of active filters. You can alter the CSS for, um, for your dashboard and that will show um, kind of in real time as you alter it and you can uh, go to the edit view as well as uh, saving the new positioning or the CSS that you've changed. Uh, so that gives you an overview of the dashboard view. Now I did not save so if I refresh I will get to the dashboard as it was before I uh, altered it. Um, so for any of these views it's possible to um, click the little play button here and I will take you to the explore view. So there's really two main uh, views in panoramic. So the dashboard view uh, that you just saw and as well as the explore view. So the explore view um, allows you to, um, it's form driven and it allows you to, to pick um, your visualization. So here if we look at the top we see a link to the data set that we're actually using. Uh, so we can look at this metadata uh, for the data set. We can see which uh, visualization type we're looking at. So we're looking at distribution bar chart now, and we, we can change that and load to go towards a line chart if we want to. Um, here is uh, information about this slice. Um, so the, the cut that we loaded to start with, um, this shows metadata around this slice. Um, and at the very top here, you can get a permalink or a short URL that will take you back to the specific slice. Uh, note that the URL that you can't see at the moment because it's out of the screen capture, but the URL is persistent. So if you send a URL to someone, they will get to the exact same view that you're looking at. So all the form elements to the left are captured um, in the URL. You can also uh, view, view a standalone version that you can embed some other place. You can um, view the actual JSON call that's behind, um, that runs behind the scene. 
Uh, and you could use that for other purposes uh, outside of panoramics. You can export a CSV um, and you can see the query that was executed behind the scene. So um, something that's interesting to note with panoramics is that this SQL, uh, panoramics speaks different uh, SQL dialects. So uh, behind the scenes, uh, we wrote SQL using the SQL Alchemy expression API that can be translated to uh, pretty much any uh, dialect of SQL out there. Cool, so um, so that gives you a little bit, an overview of the Explore view. So notice on the left that you have all these form elements that will alter the visualization. So in this case, I can look at, um, if I wanted to look only at the past 30 years, you know, from 30 years ago until now. Um, here I can also um, write kind of natural language and time ranges as well as um, pure uh, pure dates, right? So, um, and it's kind of smart. It's able to understand things like 2000 or 2000, you know, 05, 01, 01. So that there's good time um, parsing in these libraries. Here you can pick uh, the metrics you're interested in too. So I just uh, remove the metric. I could say instead of grouping by state, please group by name or any combination. So here we're looking at name. I could look at the combination of name and state. And there's something neat here with the series limit is it, behind the scene, uh, the SQL will actually run a subquery to figure out the top 25, in this case, combination of name and states and then get the full time series for uh, for these. So here you have tons of little chart options um, and you know some more advanced type analytics. So th this uh, these options are growing and um, it can it, it, it expose uh, basically the, the things that allow you to make the chart look exactly like you want it to look. Um, Note that those form elements are very different depending on the type of chart that you use, right? So if I switch to a word cloud, all of a sudden I'll be looking at very different options. So say here I would look at names based on, uh, let's look at uh, girls' names and 25. So you'll see that the options here are different, the font size from and to. Um, this we wouldn't see on the line chart. Right? So here I can make everything look a little bit smaller. Here we go. Maybe I want, I don't know, 50 instead of 25 names. And off we go. So that gives you a, a pretty good overview of the Explore um, view and how, how it works. Um, you can see here in the drop down, I'm not going to go every, in every single uh, type of visualization, but there is a growing array of uh, visualizations. Um, you, can, you feel free to uh, play with the data set here uh, and explore all these uh, different visualization types. I wanted to show a quick overview of the, the table or the semantic layer. So now we've seen the dashboards, we've seen the slices, and I wanted to show that when you introduce a new data set in Panoramics, um, you get to uh, express how this data set should show up in the visualization layer. So I'll do a very quick overview of this, but this shows the different columns in this table. And it, it lets you define, you know, whether you want these this individual columns to show up as a group by a groupable, filterable, uh, summable, count distinctable uh, column. So here you can come and click around and say, I don't want to, the sum of user ID, for instance, I want to expose a count distinct of user ID. You can also hit the little plus button and create your own SQL expressions in here. Uh, you can also come and, in this section of the metrics and create your own metrics. So here you could create ratios or more complex expressions uh, on top of your data set. Um, so I think that gives a pretty good overview of what Panoramics is all about. Um, there is also like a very um, very good support for uh, for permissions and role creation, so you can have a lot of, uh, of granularity on, on who can do what um, using panoramics. Um, that will be for an, another video. 
So thank you for watching and expect uh, more complete videos to, uh, to show up soon so that you can uh, learn everything else that there is to know about panoramics. Thank you.